Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Gunn from Duke University. Today we're going to talk about how immune cells get out of the blood and into tissues. After this lecture, you should understand the current model of leukocyte extravasation, or how white blood cells get out of the blood and into tissues, be able to identify the major types of adhesion molecules, understand the role of chemotactic signals in this process, and recognize how defects in this system lead to specific infections. One thing that sets the immune system apart from all of the other body systems is that, is that the cells of the immune system move around the body. This cell movement is vital to immune system function. Different immune functions occur in different organs or parts of organs, and the effector cells that are generated need to reach sites of infection. The right cells need to get to the right place at the right time. Here we discuss how this occurs. During inflammation, cells need to move out of the blood and into specific tissues. This presents a problem in that cells in the blood are zipping along at high speed like they are on the interstate. How do you get them to exit the blood or extravasate in the right place? The body has solved this problem by breaking it down into four simpler steps. First, get the cells to slow down and contact the blood vessel wall where they can sense signals to stop and exit. Second, provide stop signals where they are needed. Third, stop the cells. And fourth, provide signals that guide cells into tissues. The result is what is commonly known as the four steps of leukocyte extravasation. These four steps occur in a serial manner and are each controlled by specific molecular mediators. The signal to slow down is provided by selectins. These work much like Velcro. These are large bottle brush looking glycoproteins. The stop signal is provided by chemokines. These are the major endogenous mediators of cell migration. Stopping the cells requires integrins, which work like glue to mediate firm cell-cell adhesion. And finally, cells are guided into tissues using multiple chemokines and other chemotactic factors. Note that the two steps involving cell adhesion are mediated by things we call adhesion molecules, not so surprising, while the other two steps involve chemotactic factors. Okay, let's go through the specific types of molecules required for leukocyte extravasation. First, the selectins. Selectins are cell surface adhesion molecules that mediate an initial step of low affinity adhesion of circulating leukocytes to endothelial cells. They select rapidly moving cells from the blood. The extracellular domains of selectins are similar to C-type lectins, so-called because they bind carbohydrate structures. Some selectins are expressed on leukocytes and some on endothelial cells. There are three specific selectins, but they all function in a similar manner. Selectin ligands are specific glycoprotein motifs. These motifs can show up on a number of different molecules. Each motif has been given a specific name that you don't need to remember. These motifs are synthesized by specific enzymes, and loss of these enzymes leads to loss of selectin function. The key point here is that selectin ligands are glycoprotein motifs that can show up on a number of different molecules. The way selectins function is pretty straightforward. Both selectins and their ligands stick out above the cell surface on the tips of microvilli. If a rapidly moving cell brushes up against the vessel wall, selectins form contacts with their ligands. Even a low affinity interaction will provide enough friction that the cell will be driven into the vessel wall and roll along the endothelial surface. The second type of adhesion molecules we need to talk about are the integrins. Integrins are cell surface proteins composed of two non-covalently linked polypeptide chains that mediate adhesion of cells to other cells or to the extracellular matrix. There are more than 30 different integrins, all with the same basic structure, containing one of more than 15 types of alpha chains and one of seven types of beta chains. The ligands for integrins are known as cellular adhesion molecules, or CAMs. These are membrane glycoproteins whose expression is stimulated by inflammatory cytokines and pattern recognition receptors. There are several of these, each binding to a specific set of integrins. Integrins respond to intracellular signals by rapidly increasing their affinity for ligands. They function like switchblades. 
In the resting state, they are folded, but when activated, they spring open into a high affinity state. As we will discuss later, multiple signals can trigger this. One of the major signals is provided by chemokines. Integrin nomenclature can be confusing. There are several different ways that specific integrins are identified. The major immune integrins have been given specific names that you will become familiar with as we progress through this course. Integrins have three major functions. They mediate firm, stable adhesion of leukocytes to vascular endothelium. They mediate strong, stable binding of immune cells to each other. And they mediate the binding of cells to extracellular matrix proteins. We've already talked somewhat about chemokines. Their expression patterns are what determines where white blood cells go. They provide directional signals for leukocyte migration by establishing chemotactic gradients. They trigger integrin activation. They can be expressed by activated endothelial cells, and they can be expressed by inflamed tissues and transported to the endothelial surface. In some cases, they are constitutively expressed on some specialized endothelial cell types an example is CCL21, which we will discuss later. The specific patterns of cell migration are also determined by chemokine receptors. Some are expressed constitutively on specific cell types, and their expression can be induced by cell activation, maturation, or differentiation. Their expression occurs in combination with specific expression patterns of selectins and integrins, and together this provides a combinatorial code by which specific cell types are directed to specific tissues. Now that we've identified the players, let's look at how they work together to control cell migration. In the case of leukocyte extravasation, selectins, integrins, and chemokines work in a coordinated manner to recruit leukocytes from the blood. Leukocytes first adhere to the endothelium of post-capillary venules and move through the endothelium into the tissue. This takes us back to the four-step model of leukocyte extravasation. In the first step, most commonly known as rolling, endothelial cells that have been exposed to microbes or cytokines rapidly increase expression of selectins. The selectin ligands on the microvilli of the leukocytes bind to the selectins on the endothelial cells. This allows the cells to roll across the endothelial surface. These rolling cells can then sample molecules on the endothelial surface. The key molecules they are looking for are chemokines. If a cell encounters a chemokine that stimulates its chemokine receptors, this results in integrin activation. Activated integrins increase their affinity and bind to cell adhesion molecules whose expression has been increased on the activated endothelial cells. This results in firm adhesion of the cells to the endothelium. Finally, once the cells are firmly attached, they are stimulated to transmigrate across the endothelium into the tissues by chemokines or other chemoattractant signals. This is the general four-step mechanism by which leukocytes move from the blood into tissues. The details will vary in specific instances, which we will discuss later. You can see this process occurring when you perform intravital microscopy. In this video, cells can be seen rolling across the endothelial surface. When a chemokine is added, the cells stop and firmly adhere to the endothelium. So what happens if you happen to lack integrin or selectin function? There are two human diseases caused by this. People with leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 lack one of the major integrin subunits, specifically integrin beta 2, or CD18. People with leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 lack an enzyme required for selectin ligand synthesis. Both these diseases are characterized by a lack of neutrophil accumulation. In other words, they don't make pus. And these people suffer frequent bacterial or fungal infections. This concludes our discussion of leukocyte extravasation. Thank you.